<laughs> it feels kind of weird. So I'm doing this live session and I'd love to introduce you to my husband, Callan. Hello. Um, I'm going to get this up on my phone so that I can see the comments coming in on the lives on this, sorry, on, in the Facebook group. Um, if I can find it, I'll have to keep refreshing, I think. Um, so obviously there's a lot of things going on at the moment um, in the world that are kind of unusual. Hi everyone, um, with this pandemic. And I know that it's obviously created a lot of uncertainty, a lot of fear, a lot of panic, a lot of stress, understandably, not only for people's health, but also for like our businesses, our livelihoods. And, you know, so much has changed, like probably for quite a lot of us in this group, we, a lot of us perhaps already work from home. So we're kind of like, kind of doing the same thing like okay because they're on pretty much lockdown but still we work from home so maybe it's not impacted you huge amounts but for, for others it has really impacted us um and I really wanted to do something within this amazing community to I don't know bring us together in a positive way to help in any way I can and I was thinking what could I do that would be really helpful and so this obviously whole thing is personal. Like it's personal because, you know, this is happening in the world. This has such a huge impact on our lives and also on a real emotional level, like the panic, the fear, the stress, it's real and it is personal. And so I thought, what do I normally do when I'm feeling fear, when I'm feeling anxious, when I'm stressed out, when I'm facing challenges, when there's so much uncertainty that I feel like I'm drowning in it all and just suffocating with it. I think I thought to myself, what do I do? And I realized that there are a few people that I always turn to for help and support. And so I reached out to some of those people to see if they would join us for a live session in this group to kind of bring their words of wisdom to you all. So I kind of was like, right, who's the first person I turn to when I've got like, when I'm stuck? And it was this one. Me. So I was like, Kellen, will you do a Facebook Live with me? Look <laughs> <laughs> at you. Um, wow. So then tomorrow I'm doing a Facebook Live with my dad, which I'm even more nervous about because goodness knows what the heck he's going to say. I'm like, dad, please do not say anything inappropriate. Um, and then on Wednesday, we've got the amazing Michelle Simmons and sh she's someone who I have sessions with regularly and we do EFT together. We do visualizations. She really helps me on a real energetic level. So I'm really excited about that session. Thursday with Nikki Ellis Brown, a really amazing friend of mine. And we're going to be talking about working from home with kids and also like how to communicate effectively and not feel guilty about still continuing with your business and continuing to sell, even with all this chaos going on in the world. And then finally on Friday, we're going to close things out with Elizabeth Harper, who is going to be doing a meditation, I think a meditation session, like a healing session for all of us, which should be a really lovely way to end it all. Um, so these are people that have really helped me. So I'm excited. So firstly, I wanted to say we have a one-year-old that is over <laughs> here who we have literally shoved Peppa Pig on the TV for him in the hopes that he will stay quiet. So far, it is working. But at some point, I feel like he's going to come and unplug everything. He's going to come and be a little menace. <laughs> um, but for now, he seems distracted. Enough. I hope it stays that way. <laughs> anyway, so I really don't know how this session is going to work out. We've also got a dog down there who's going to start barking if something in the garden appears. Um, but anyway, I'm excited to just roll with this session. Um, anyway, I would love you to get involved in this conversation. Firstly, how are you feeling about everything that's going on? <laughs> Casey clearly has some strong feelings about True what's Casey, going right? on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got a lot to say about this? <laughs> Cheeky. Um, yeah, how are you feeling about everything going on? Like, is it impacting you a lot? Do you feel stressed? Do you feel afraid? Um, talking about that, when this whole thing kicked off, like I think for us over in the UK, it kind of got really severe, I feel like last week. About, about this time last week. We were on a trip away. We were on a holiday because we I was like, I, we needed to get away. I just felt so overwhelmed with everything. And um so we were originally going to go to Dubai and obviously did not go. Um, and so we thought, let's go away somewhere in the UK. So we went to the New Forest for a couple of days and then went to Cornwall. And we were down in Cornwall when things definitely started to get a bit more severe. And I was like, oh, I feel a bit slightly uncomfortable that we're here 
Um, and then um, Casey ended up getting an awful cough and cold, which was just stressful being out somewhere where you had to go for breakfast, lunch and dinner in public. And like he's coughing and sneezing everywhere. And I was like, oh my God, we need to leave. So we ended up cutting our trip short. But I remember on that trip, like when the severity of the situation really sank in, I remember feeling so overwhelmed with like fear and like what's happening right now. It felt really heavy, like really just strange emotion, like a really heavy emotion. Like this is a really big change and I feel really depressed and down about it. Like, I don't know how to cope. Like, how did you feel? I felt like it was kind of uncertain times. I feel like hey, being at a hotel with a sick kid with all this going on, we were in- yeah. I felt like we were in a magnifying glass. I'm sure we weren't, but it definitely felt weird. And then we couldn't get any medicine or Cal Polar for him. And so then I thought, well, we thought separately that that's to just go home. Yeah. Even if our trip short. And But it, I definitely felt stressful, um, like stressed. Um, but I love this. Um, <laughs> calm. And let me try and find this on, on my phone because then I can see the comments better because I can't see names on while we're, while we're streaming. But I definitely felt unsure, uncertain. You just weren't sure what's going to come next. Because I feel like at that point, I mean, it still is really day by day. Everything's changing. News yeah. is coming in. And so um, I think when you're not home and you're out, kind of, it definitely makes you feel even more uncertain. Yeah, it definitely does. Well, I can't find this live on my phone, which is so frustrating. Um, I just have to... Call you, not say names, um, but let me just read. That's really annoying. Some of these comments out, so <laughs> I like it. Someone said calm and focused. Um, that's really good. Um, I've been more stressed, and I think it has added more pressure on my personal relationships. So I think this is really interesting. This is why I wanted to bring Kellen on because, firstly, I call him Coach Kellen because. I feel like he is my coach, my go-to when I am feeling uncertain, which is why I wanted to bring him on. And for me, I think that like as entrepreneurs and, um, you know, with people, we've got big dreams, big ideas. And I feel like some often, often we, we need a lot of support from, from the people around us who will believe in our crazy ideas and our crazy dreams and allow us to like get on and do our thing. And when you have, when you can build up that relationship and you can, get it to a point where it works really well, it can be so powerful in helping us to actually create more success and to be happier. And especially in times like this, where there is so much uncertainty, it's so good to be able to communicate effectively to help one another. Um, And so one of the biggest things I wanted to talk to you about with you is like how we stay positive together. And I feel like this is something we've worked at. Yeah. Like really hard throughout our relationship because like everyone's relationships, like it's just a constant work in progress. And like, we're constantly working at how we can communicate together really well so that we can have like harmony and a really happy home and to have like a best lives together. Yeah. Um. So I feel like together, like one of the first things that we do whenever there's a situation like this, where there is that uncertainty and stress is we talk about stuff. Yeah. I think, Feel like we always just take time and just get off on get off whatever we have on our chest and just kind of put it out there yeah and then i think it just kind of all too often gets the ball rolling and then i think we can just kind of i think just get off your chest really makes a huge difference just as a start yeah we do like little not actually but like it feels like sometimes <laughs> like therapy sessions where we'll talk to each other but i think for us i think the key that we've kind of managed to get to is like getting to a point where the whole idea of the conversation is to support one another and to lift each other up, not to pull each other down. And so like our goal is to stay positive. So for example, like when we were away at the dinner table, I definitely was like, I'm feeling stressed about everything going on. And so you were there trying to like be the positive one and like perk me back up and like help me to not feel so overwhelmed by the situation. Because what did I say? I said something about like, us being here there's not much we could really do about it right now other than just think 
like happy thoughts, positive thoughts and try to keep ourselves up. Cause otherwise we'll just keep going round and round, pulling ourselves down and getting ourselves spiraled into like a really dark place. And then I think you changed the subject and probably started talking about Tesla or something <laughs> to, a call, to try and like distract me. <laughs> um but um but there i feel like there are some really proactive things that we also do together which really help us so one of those things is we listen to like audio books together that help, are positive and that empower us so when we got in the car to drive home from cornwall um <clears throat> we started listening to this audio book which is called how to raise successful people and within 10 minutes of listening to this book, I felt my energy drastically shift and I felt so much more positive and empowered. And it really took me from this hole that I was in where I was so immersed in the news, I was so immersed in the fear and the terror and the uncertainty of the situation. And all of a sudden I was pulled out of that into feelings and thoughts that were inspiring and empowering and helped me to feel good again. I don't know about, did you feel the same way? Yeah, I think it definitely made you think about other things, took your mind like off Like it, it for literally sure. took my mind off it. When I was listening to this audio book, there wasn't any possible way I could have been thinking about everything going on because all I was thinking, all I was doing is focusing on the book. And I think it's so powerful, especially doing it together, because then all of our conversations came around the book. Yeah. And all we were talking about then is this book and how amazing it was and like talking about different elements of the book together. So I think when you actually do that with like someone in your family your partner or a friend or whoever when you do things like that as a collective it's really powerful because then you change the focus of your conversations and you can have conversations that are uplifting and inspiring and for me this makes all the difference I think you know um there's, there's a quote I always go on about it you've heard me say it all the time by <laughs> yeah. Victor Frankl and he said everything in life can be taken away from you except for your freedom to choose how you respond and in life there's just so much stuff that we have no control over but what we do get to control is how we respond to a situation and so for me with this it's like what can I do that's going to help me and us as a family respond in a positive way like how can we keep a positive and happy environment at home so that we can move forward in the best possible way we can. Because what I know for sure is that the fear and anxiety and stress are not our friend. Like they do, it doesn't help us one little bit to feel those things. Um, so for me, it's like constantly trying to think, well, how do I move into better feeling thoughts and better, like a better feeling state so that I can empower myself um, to kind of get through this? Because we will get through this situation, even though sometimes it feels impossible. And I think it's like, how do you keep that energy in your home and your environment at home so that you can stay feeling good? I think the other thing is that we do is like, we're so intentional about setting the the vibe for our home and yeah. like making, like we're so intentional, so conscious about wanting to have a happy home and wanting to feel good and feel good thoughts. Like we have quotes and little signs all over the place that are like, good vibes and happy something things to do with like happiness and smiling and all that kind of stuff and I think that we are so intentional together as a couple about yeah. lifting each other up I don't about think we ever try to pull each other down or like what well, it just no. doesn't ever happen and I no. know it's really reassuring to have that that person there knowing that like they're never going to say anything bad to you and if they are going to tell you maybe that's not the best idea it's going to be in a really positive way yeah kind of like masked in a positive way and so you end up feeling coming supported out of it rather than like torn down or yeah, like yeah your ideas crap or <laughs> <laughs> you probably shouldn't be doing that but i feel like this is stuff we've worked on actually yeah. it reminds me like i brought this this kind of doesn't really relate totally but like um when we got married i created <laughs> the phipps family handbook and um I thought to myself, you know, as a business owner, I'm always doing stuff to help me to build the most successful business possible. I'm always doing, like asking myself, what are my values as a business owner? What is my mission? What, you know, why am I doing this? And I always think about that stuff. I set my goals for myself. And I started to think, you know, why as a couple don't we do that? Like, why don't I create like, so that then made me think, why don't I create a workbook for us <laughs> as a married couple to do, to like actually sit down together and think through like, what is our family mission? So literally our family mission is the first thing, family values to live by, 
reasons why Carrie thinks Callan is amazing, reason why Callan thinks Carrie is amazing, um, how to make Carrie feel special, how to make, make Callan feel special. Like, so it went through all of it and like our goals, our vision, like what we wanted to achieve, our individual goals, our family goals, places we wanted to travel, things we wanted to experience together. And I feel like doing this kind of stuff has just helped us so much throughout the years because it really helps us to communicate and actually come together with shared values that then we integrate in our lives and then we want to integrate into Casey's life and is what helps us to get intentional about the whole vibe and energy of our home and like protecting that like nothing else so that it doesn't become like a negative space and that we don't get sucked into a situation where we feel really negative and really down like obviously everyone goes through crappy times don't get me wrong like hard times it's hard you know it's not all la -di da but like I feel like this stuff has really set us up with like a solid foundation yeah I don't know I don't, it's hard to I don't know I feel like it's something we've both been really intentional about and that we've worked on but at the same time it's really like subtly kind of ha and snuck in in a way of like it's just I don't know I yeah. feel like separately we both wanted it and it's just kind of just happens yeah that's true so but I, don't know. I think doing this stuff together as a couple as a family unit is just a really good thing that can help especially in times like this um and then doing other proactive things like getting out going for walks i feel like that's what we do a lot is go out on a walk and just talk about things talk things out like whatever if one of us is stressed about something or something's bothering one of us or that's just kind of like just a good way to just kind of clear it, get some fresh air. And... Yeah. And be, yeah, and it makes such a difference. Yeah. Um, I just think doing things that make you feel good. Anyway, let me look at the one. I love it, some comments. I was getting carried away waffling on. You know, the funny thing is that like, Kellen's actually the talker, don't you think? Mm, it depends. Today is with this kind of stuff. I, I don't know. I think it's also on. this is the first time ever being live on video. I know. So How are you doing? It's a bit weird. How are you doing? Do you feel Not like it's having weird? someone to talk to? The thing is, you know what you see me doing this stuff all the time. I do, but it's it's, it's a bit different when it's you on it. When there's only one way of communication, it's kind of a bit different. I love this. Love For the first time in twenty years, I'm finding my partner's sarcasm quite funny and reassuring. <laughs> I love it. Oh yeah, I love Abraham Hicks on audio at any time of stress. So good. I I totally agree with you. I really love Abraham Hicks stuff. I listen to or watch their videos on YouTube. Like there's so many videos of theirs on YouTube. And I love listening to them. Like even just in these five, 10 minutes, it's such a good boost to make you feel good. And I think like one of the biggest things that Abraham Hicks say is like, you have to calibrate with the solution, not the problem. And I think so often, especially when it's things like this in the world where the media is, you know, it's everywhere. We're seeing it everywhere it's so easy to like be feel like you're calibrated to the problem and you're so in tune with the problem you are that's where your energy level is and it's like how do you take a step back and shift and then actually start to calibrate with better feelings and like better feeling thoughts so you can actually move towards a solution obviously who knows what the solution is really but um I think right now for example what we do know is that we need to make the most of like empowering ourselves. We need to use this time to expand our minds, to learn, to soak things up that are gonna really empower us and help us. Um, like if you have a business where it's really impacted what you're doing, like what could you do now from home that could really help you? Like, could you build your followers? Could you focus on like building up your audience, connecting with your audience? Um, could you do things and get creative about like what you could put together online that might make a difference? And just thinking about like, okay, what can I do right now? Rather than thinking about like all the things you can't do. Cause I feel like I know for myself, it's easy to get stuck in that place of thinking, about all the things, like getting sucked into all the things that you can't do or all of the challenges. Um, please, can you recommend some audiobooks? We've listened to some really good ones. We have. What is, um, was it Shoe Dog? Shoe Dog. Shoe Dog, that's a really good by, one. By Phil Knight, the founder of Nike. Yeah. It's his memoir. It's really absolutely good. Absolutely amazing. The other one is Unbroken. Yeah. Um, I can't remember who wrote that, but it's the same author as Seabiscuit. That's a bloody good Laura book. Hildebrand. Oh wow! I didn't check your memory out. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's who it is. I think it sounds yeah, I'm pretty, familiar. It sounds similar or correct. -ish. Yeah, that's a really good. That one. one's amazing. I think books like that are. Re I really like books like that where it's someone's story of how 
they became what they are or where they started and what they turned into kind of i'm in the middle of reading or actually listening to you on your yeah that's a good one really interesting really inspiring oh something else that's really inspiring i don't know if any of you have watched self-made on netflix but it's a four-part series on netflix about the first black female millionaire and oh my goodness it is so so inspiring um i need to do a breakdown of it because like she does some really incredible stuff in that that like really you know as somebody who loves watching businesses grow and loves dissecting businesses like i love watching how she's doing it because you can clearly see the things she does which make all the difference to her success anyway if you've not checked it out watch it it's so empowering or it really make you feel good um so knowing that this is temporary and we have been blessed with the gift of time that we often crave now we have time and family connect connection just need to make the best of it some work some staycation yeah i think that's the thing trying to make the best of it all yeah i'm trying to give give keep some routines to give my day structure and limit how much i watch listen to news and co- coverage yeah like i've tried to stop like i don't want to be ignorant but i've definitely stopped myself going down that rabbit hole and yeah creating structure um so this weekend i created a 30-day challenge for myself um because i just really want to focus my energy and go all in like my challenge actually i've called it my <laughs> show up and shine challenge uh, all about <laughs> showing up and um like making sure that i do like my daily meditation my daily visualization and work on on myself as well as like doing other stuff and you're already good like <laughs> I've held you, hold you, held you accountable to making me do it. I, I have, you have. I mean, today's the first day, but I've already checked in with you a couple of times. Yeah. Make sure you've done what you've done. So, um, I learned that it's safe and it's okay to allow negative thoughts to bubble up. Sometimes we are actually anxious about being anxious. That is so true, and I feel like it is. It is okay to allow those. It's normal to feel those feelings and, you know, experience those things. And I think that it's kind of like allowing them to come and go and then reaching reaching for the better feeling what's the racket you're yeah, making some cheerleaders. oh you're doing wonderfully gallon yay <laughs> what are you doing you're helping <laughs> um the name of the book that i mentioned at the beginning which i think you might mean is um please do not pull the light over is um Oh, no, it's actually, I don't think I said it, but a really good book is Man's Search for Meaning by Victor Frankl. He's just going to pull the light and come crashing down. Is, is that the book you're talking about at the beginning or is it the um, How to Raise Successful People? Uh, oh, yeah, that's How to one, Raise Successful That's the one we were listening people. to on the way back. Yeah, that's That we good. started. Um, I think that, that one, I think what helped just kind of, I mean, with that book, kind of helped things stay positive, whatever. It's just like knowing that everything's, is okay kind of it's gonna be like it will be okay like the things can just all be like really really messed up but then it just kind of all writes itself and i don't know yeah it it just felt really really reassuring i guess yeah um um one of the other things i really wanted to talk about was like coping at home working from (laughs) home with a one-year-old i know that not everyone is in this situation but a lot of you do have children at home And obviously we had just moved into the office and I was working from there. So now to come back to working from home, um, like I've, Casey's definitely in this phase where he's so needy at the moment. So it's like hard when you're at home, you just have to figure out like how to make the best of the situation. So like we have it now where I literally have, he has to, Kellen distracts Casey. I then sneak off to the office in our house and then I literally don't come out. I don't come out like you end up like bringing me lunch or drinks or something. And the only way I come out is if I'm going to be out for like an hour and spend time with Casey because otherwise he gets so hysterical and upset. I just feel so guilty. Um, So it's definitely like when you work from home, you've got a kid. But it's really cute because he knows that you're in the office though. And if you go in because you walk by the door and he goes, shh. She Aww. tells me to be quiet. That's so cute. <laughs> but it's crazy. And um, on Thursday, when Nikki's here, we can definitely talk more about like working from home and like kids. And I know there's some really great stuff. I saw Laura Robinson had posted out a really great um, comment about working from home with kids, which is really good. Um, 
So, <laughs> yeah. but it's, it's can, it can be a bit distracting, but I think that's the thing. We just got to like focus and yeah, get really clear on what our intentions are, what we want to make happen, what we're showing up to do. I think that's why I did my show up and shine challenge. Cause I was like, I need to be really focused and really disciplined right now. And so I need to challenge myself so I can go all in and immerse myself in, in things that are going to help me to move forward. And so that's what I've done. So I saw someone say, um, can you share details of your show and shine challenge? I'll put some details together for you, but basically just a series of personal development things I'm doing every day. And then a series of things I'm doing to show up online like never before. Um, so like more posts, more live stuff, all that kind of stuff, and just being really consistent with it. Um, so I'm excited about it. But um, but anyway, like obviously the main part of this conversation was to share some of the stuff we've done. I know this is a bit of a random know. start because like obviously like it's kind of, this is obviously our personal relationship and the things that we do as a couple to help one another. But I feel like sometimes it's interesting seeing like how other people work together and the things that people do and, you know, even when listening to audiobooks or podcasts like we do together and talking and just chatting things through and like just being really intentional about being happy and being positive and being each other's cheerleader. For me, like those are some of the core things that just really help me to get through difficult times. And I think it's so important that we just surround ourselves with that energy. And what I always say as well is to like people that I know who may be when they're in difficult situations with like their own partners where for example it's not I don't know there's kind of maybe quite a lot of negativity it's like I always think you have to it's like everyone is everyone and everything is a reflection of us so if you want to create happiness and positivity you have to be happiness and positivity and the more happy and positive you are the more I find people around you reflect that back at you. And so instead of being like really annoyed or irritated about how someone else is handling something, because you can't control or change how someone else behaves, like you have no say over that. But what you can control and the only thing you can tr control is how you are and how you respond and how you show up every day and how the, the energy that you put out there. And I find most of the time, if you show up and you're the best version of yourself, you are as happy as you, you know, you try to be as happy and as positive as possible, that is definitely what comes back at you more. And with friends in the past who I've talked to about this in like relationships, and I've just said, just be the most amazing version of yourself. Be so happy in an authentic way. Be really helpful. Be really kind. Be really positive. And don't do it with any expectation as to what you're going to get back. Just do it because you want to do it because you want to live the happiest life you can live. And having the best relationship means living like the best life you can live so do it for you and do it with no expectations and just see what happens and if you do it for like seven days 14 days 30 days or whatever just to be consistent at it and to like keep pulling yourself back on track with it and the the things that have happened and people been like oh my gosh I can't believe it it's like he's a new person like I don't know it's really powerful don't you think I agree though, like all my know. weirdness and my weird strategies like no, making but... you fill out a workbook <laughs> We did it together. You didn't make me fill out. Well, I know. I mean, how long did it actually take us to do it? Okay. To actually put the pen on the paper it took a while. Um, but no, I think even with that, even if you are, you force yourself to do the things to try to be a happy and positive person, you end up becoming happy and positive. Even if it's the little things like going, making your partner a cup of tea or a yeah. coffee or just little, it can just start with little tiny things like that. And I think it just kind of builds on you just kind of forcing yourself to be that way and then you just next thing realize you're just kind of a lot oh, happier yeah. and you're a lot I don't know it's so true because I feel like in like work stuff I always want to go above and beyond to delight and wow people and I think to myself if I'm prepared to do this for my business and for my audience then I have to be prepared to do it for family obviously yeah. I just feel like it's like the way you hold yourself and like it changes your life. It changes the relationships that you have. Yeah, I got I lucky with you, though. Did you? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> You're very, you're very good. Um, actually, that reminds me. Think it makes me think. I posted out a while ago saying I was going to do a video with Kellen, and because um, actually I put some of them here, but people asked like the dynamics of our relationship, 
what is Kellen's role on the family? Does he help <laughs> with the business? Does he get an allowance? Do you both like this arrangement or will things change in the future? What are his dreams and business plans? So many amazing questions came through. So I'll definitely have to do another live with you and talk all about how our relationship works in terms of like business, breadwinner, yeah, parents, how it all the whole thing works. I think it's a really interesting topic. And I definitely want to talk more about it because I feel like when you are a mother, a wife, the founder of a business, you have employees, you've got so much on your shoulders. It is an overwhelming situation sometimes. But um, I think it'd be interesting to talk about. Yeah. Um, anybody got any questions? Shoot, shoot, and we'll see what we can come up with. Or... <laughs> Uh, I mean, we'll just we'll be honest. Casey, but... do you want to come and say goodbye? Not that you said hello. Casey. 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 I think Bentley wants to say hi. Bentley, you can say hi. Do you want to come and say hi? Come here. Yeah. yeah There's Bentley. Here. Bentley saying hi, of course. Poor Bentley. Oh. Oh, come on then. Oh, and Bentley's in the shop. Where is Bentley? <laughs> there he is. Oh, Benny. Our family. A little fan bam. Yeah, we're all here. Well, thank you so much for joining us live. I really hope that, I know this is a bit random, but hopefully it has been a little bit helpful just to see like some of the stuff we've done. If you have any questions whatsoever, then let me know. Like, and there might have been stuff I've missed because it's kind of hard to see on here. But um, thank you for joining though. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> and um and yeah i'm excited to come back tomorrow and interview my dad it'll be wildly different and who knows what will happen but it should be a fun week of just going behind the scenes and just talking to some people that have really helped me in my life oh really <laughs> um so yeah that's nice isn't it yeah. <laughs> um so yeah i'm excited anyway um, hopefully we'll all come together and keep each other positive and keep each other going because um, the thing is we have to keep going because the economy 100% needs us right now um, anyway thank you for joining us thank you Kellen for your first live you were you're excellent welcome. hopefully I did alright you're fantastic I hope I did you did I don't feel like I said too much sorry no, no. <laughs> um, but yeah and I will see you soon bye everyone Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, bye-bye. Yeah, bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>